Good morning and happy Mother's Day. Welcome to the Church of God of the Union Assembly of Wilkesboro, our online service this Sunday morning. We're so proud that you've tuned in to be with us. I'd like to start by saying a very special happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers of the Church of God here and mothers abroad throughout this land of America. And we're especially thinking of you today. And if you're uh, fortunate enough to have your mother with you, Today, just give her a big hug and tell her how much you love her from all of us. You know, there's lots of us who are not as fortunate as, as that, but we know there's a land and there's a home where uh, we shall be reunited. And that's what we're looking to this morning. And I thought on this special occasion, what more appropriate thing to discuss this morning and to talk about but then a land called heaven. It's a land, of course, we read in the Bible that has streets of gold and gates of pearl and those things, but more importantly, I read that in Ephesians 1 and 10, Foster Paul wrote that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in himself, whether they be things on earth or things in heaven. One day there's going to be a, a reunion of heaven and earth it's going to come together. And today, through your, your personal struggle and your trial that you're going through, whatever that may be today, you know, a lot of times as human beings, all we can see is the trial that's in our way. But what about looking this morning at some things that you cannot see with your natural eye? Looking at some things that is just as real and just as important to you and me, of course, as all these things that our natural eyes behold in this life. There's things that your heart can see that your natural eye is not privileged to look into. In God's word, Apostle Paul talked about how I have not seen, neither hath it entered into the heart of man, that's the natural man, the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But then he also went on to say, but God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. So there's a part of you, there's two sets of eyes. You have one, of course, that's in your head, but Ephesians talked about the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. So if you can see with those eyes of understanding, they're not in your head, they're located in your heart. Jesus himself talked about a group of people that if they would just could see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and be converted and he would heal them. So to really see things through a spiritual set of eyes, we have to see them with our heart. And that's sort of going to be my text for a few minutes this morning. On the title of it will be Things Not Seen. And we'll start here in 2 Corinthians 4 and 18. Apostle Paul said, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen, they are eternal. So what is your trial this morning? What are you facing in life that just seems insurmountable that you can't get over? It's comforting to me to know this morning that all these things, these troubles and these trials and the, these problems you see are temporal. They're temporary things. For the things you see with this natural eye are temporal, meaning at one time and one point in the future somewhere, in God's appointed time, they're going to pass away. Jesus said heaven and earth would pass away, but my word would not pass. So these natural things, even these trials and these struggles through life, and this coronavirus and every disease is going to pass away. God's going to issue in eternal life to this world. And those things that you cannot see with these natural eyes this morning, 
They're eternal. And they're going to abide forever. And that's the same thing as doing the will of God. It did say heaven and earth would pass away, but Jesus said, my word shall not pass away. And John went on to say that he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So to be eternal and to see things that way, we have to see them with our, our heart and through the eyes of faith. Hebrews 11 and 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. What is it this morning that you're longing for? What is it that you're hoping for? Of course, we'd love to see these church doors open. And uh, through that eye of faith, we can see that day come. A lot of our sister churches are privileged to be gathering out this Mother's Day morning in, in the congregation with one another. Here in North Carolina, we're not so fortunate as of yet. But that day is coming. And faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Then he said, for, for by it the elders obtained a good report. And through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Now he said worlds with an S on it. There's a present world. Yeah, there's different types of worlds in the Bible, but now all of them here were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. So that's something that's not seen made those worlds, and it was the word of God. Now, you can't see that with your natural eye, but you can see it through the eye of faith. Yeah, Apostle Paul talked about the world to come, and that is heaven, and it's in view, and eternity that's coming along. John 3 and verse 7 said, Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. Now that's something that you cannot see with the natural eye. But just like the wind, you can see an effect of it. Marvel not that I said unto you, you must be born again. He said, the wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh or whether it goeth. So is everyone that's born of the Spirit, just as much as you cannot see the wind that blows. But you can see the effects of the breeze when it passes by. And you can feel that, that breeze, whether it be a cold wind or a warm breeze on your body. And you can see the trees moving and different things, flags waving. That's not the wind, but it's in a direct effect of the wind. That's the way it is when someone's born again, born of the water and of the spirit. You may not be able to see that birth, but you sure can see the effects of that birth. That tongue don't speak like it used to. Those feet don't go places they used to go. Those hands don't pick up things. It's a new creature, a new birth. It's something that you cannot see with the natural eye, but you can sure tell the effects of this morning. And that's just like being born of God's Spirit. Yeah, when, you, when that change is made, these signs shall follow them that believe. Jesus said, in my name, they shall speak with new tongues. That's a new conversation. They shall, it said, and it, they shall pick up serpents, or take up serpents, rather. It didn't say pick up, it said they shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. Yeah, these, these signs you can tell of a true believer, somebody who's got their eyes and their heart centered on heaven this morning. Yeah, you may not be able to see the birth, but you can see the effects of it. Just as much as you may not be able to send, see the wind, so is everyone that's born of the Spirit, but you can see the effects of it this morning. The effects of the gospel. Luke 17 and 20, speaking of that, that birth, that spiritual birth. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered and said unto them, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation, neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. So that kingdom is not seen with your natural set of eyes, but it is seen through the eye of faith. What is the kingdom of God? It's righteousness. It's joy. Yeah, what's well, said for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Yeah, you can see the effects of that kingdom. 
Yeah, but that kingdom didn't come with observation, friends. But it did come with a sound. And suddenly there come a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Now them men and them women in that upper room, they was in the spirit that day. And incidentally, that's where you've got to go. And I've got to go to see the kingdom of God. You can't see it with a natural eye. And so much that Paul said, you know, that it's not been revealed to the natural eye or even entered to the heart of a natural man, the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But if you get in that spirit, friends, you can see things with your spiritual eyes. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like a fire, and it set upon each of them. So if you'll get in the spirit this morning, you can see a mansion in heaven with streets of gold. You can see our loved ones, your loved ones, my loved ones gathered around the throne this morning. If you could see those kind folks, they would be saying, come on. They wouldn't be saying it's time to give up and lay down on God. They'd be saying, come on, it's time to go a little farther this morning. So I encourage you today, why not let's take a look at the things which are not seen. Here in Luke 17 and 20, when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered and said unto them, he, and he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you this morning. So if you've been born of the water and of the spirit, you've got that kingdom living within you. That kingdom of God he's speaking about, Romans 14, 17 said, For the kingdom of heaven is not meat and drink, the kingdom of God rather, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable unto God and approved unto men. So if you want God to accept you and want God to approve you, yeah, let's get in that righteousness. Let's get in that peace. Let's get in that joy. Let's get in that kingdom. And you can't see that with a natural set of eyes. When the, when the Holy Ghost was sent to the church, the Bible said there would come a sound suddenly from heaven like a rushing mighty wind. And it sat upon each of them. Yeah, then it, it talked about how that they were filled with the Holy Ghost and there appeared unto them. That, now notice, they seen something that day. There appeared unto them, clothing tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. But to see that kingdom, you got to get in that spirit. That's what Apostle Paul talked about when he said it not entered into the heart of man. Neither was it seen the things that God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us, his children. Those that's been born of the water and of the spirit. He's revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things. Yea, the deep things of God. So through that eye of faith and through those things that which are not seen this morning, yeah, there is a place called heaven where my loved ones and your loved ones are resting beside the river of life. Friends, these troubles and trials that you might be facing today in your life, they don't wouldn't seem so much and so big if you could just see the heaven that was waiting on you for serving the Lord. And they're waiting on me this morning. And that's where my eyes are set. Here in John 4 and 32, But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that you know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him all to eat? Jesus saith unto him, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. They couldn't see what he was speaking about, friends. He had some meat that they couldn't see with their natural eyes. They reasoned whether somebody had brought them some food or not, but he told them plainly, no, what I, my meat is, is to just to do my Father's will and to finish the work he sent me to do. Thank God that Jesus did that very thing. And through that work that God sent him to do, he made it possible for you and me to have a home in heaven. Hebrews 11 and 7. This is just a little this morning on this Mother's Day on some things not seen. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, 
of things not as seen as yet, moved with fear and prepared an ark for the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became the heir of righteousness, which is by faith. God told Noah that it was going to rain and he was going to destroy a man that he had made with a flood. Noah had never seen it rain. Noah had never heard it thunder or the lightning race across the sky. But because God's word said it was going to rain, the Bible said Noah moved with fear. Same way, friends, as we know, it's not the rain that's coming, but the fire, the wrath of Almighty God's going to be poured out on this land. I want to move up this morning and move with fear. Yeah, not only... To, to save myself from this wrath to come, but I want to get my friends and my family and everybody that I can to come into the ark, come into the house of God, the ark of safety, and get hid away with Jesus this morning. No, we've not seen the fire fall from heaven, man, but we know it's coming. It's another example of just something that's not seen, but we know it's real. And you remember what... We started the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen, they are eternal. So that home is eternal, just as much as the wrath of God's eternal on the disobedient. Now let's read the eighth verse here of Hebrews 11. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should afterwards receive for an inheritance, he obeyed. And went out, not knowing, not knowing whether he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of that same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Now you notice what them old men of God was looking for. They were looking for a city that God built and not man built. And through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was a past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Yeah, Abraham well stricken in years and Sarah well stricken in years. And it looked impossible to the natural life for, for life to spring forth from those those people, Abraham and Sarah. Yeah, but with God, my friends, there's nothing that's impossible this morning. Whatever you need God to do, he'll do it for you. If you obey him and you seek for it, he'll give you the things that you need. Therefore sprang there of one, and him as good as dead. So many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and the sand which is by the seashore innumerable, these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. Are you seeking anything from God today? Are you seeking for a land that's better than this one? A land, like the old writer said, where the flowers never fade. Yeah, that's what we're looking to today. And truly, if these people back then had been mindful of the country whence they came out, they may have had opportunity to return. Just like you and me, if you look back on your past life, I'm sure we've all had plenty of chances and opportunities to turn back and go back that way. Yeah, but have we made that promise to God that we're going forward? That no matter what the cost, we're not going to turn back on you now, Lord. These people made that promise. But now, they desire a better country. That is, unheavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he hath prepared for them a city. Those men and women of God, they died without having received what had been promised to them. But they embraced the promises made. They held on to those promises made. And through that word of God, they could see a land not made with hands, not with their natural eyes. They could see a land through faith and through the eye of faith that would be theirs one day. 
It's going to be yours one day. It's going to be mine one day. Apostle Paul said here in Hebrews 13 and 11 about that city that they were looking for that had foundations whose builder and maker is God. Listen to what Paul said. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp. Wherefore Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood suffered without the gate. Let us, go there, let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp bearing his reproach. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Yes, there's one coming, my friends, that's not been made with a natural hand and cannot be seen with a natural eye. Here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Think about that. My friends, we seek one to come. What are we seeking? A continuing city. A place that's never going to wax old and decay. Jesus said for you and me to lay up for ourselves treasures in heaven. I've got some there today. We're looking that way today. We're longing for that place this morning. Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Where rust and moth don't corrupt, neither do thieves break through and steal. There's a place and there is a real treasure that's been laid up for you and for me. Jesus Christ made it possible through his death on the cross, his resurrection this morning. Now, if you'll have him, you can have his home that we're preaching about these things that's not seen this morning. Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13 and 11, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a, as a child, but when I become a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know even as also I am known. And now by the faith, hope, and charity, these three but the greatest of these is charity. How come the greatest of these is charity? Faith will end when we get and we see what we've been fighting for. Hope will end inside of heaven. So faith will end one day, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Hope will end one day, but you remember charity never faileth. Now, what is charity? Charity is God this morning. It's godliness. It's, it's God himself. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Then the Bible said, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. You remember, charity is the tree. And love is the fruit of the tree and on the tree. Yeah, for the fruit of the spirit is love and joy and peace and gentleness and on on down so charity it encompasses more than love my friends god is love but now love in every case is not god for the love of money is the root of all evil so you can't say love is god but you can say god is love this morning and you can say god is charity because he is and charity is going to abide forever yeah, here to show you about that hope that's going to end, Romans the 8th chapter and the 24th verse, for we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for it? So if you had what you was hoping for, you would no longer need hope. But he said, but if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. We're hoping for something that we cannot see with our natural eye but we know it's real this morning. Heaven is just as real yeah, as the town you live in and the, the chair you're sitting in this morning. Yeah, heaven's just that real. And now this is what God did for you and for me, 1 John 3 and 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. No, I've never seen a, a glorified body, and you've never seen a glorified body this morning. It's not yet appeared what we shall be, but this we do know, that when he shall appear, 
we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in himself purifieth himself, even as he is pure. What if you were to wax old and decay? What if you were to leave this world? That's not the end, my friends, this morning. That's just the beginning of life. 2 Corinthians 5 and 1, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Think about it. You know, if you were to put off this life, you've got another building, a house that wasn't made with hands, and it's eternal in the heavens. Though you may not be able to see it with your natural eyes, but if you can see it with your heart, you know it's real and you know it's there. If you have faith to believe in God's word, you know that home is waiting for you when this life is over. So let's don't just focus on your trial this morning. Let's focus on the victory that we have in Jesus Christ that's coming to you and to me when this life is over. He said, for in this we groan earnestly, be desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so, that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle, this natural body, do groan being burdened. Not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. It's not that anyone just wants to die. Not anyone that's in their right mind. But it's that we want to live eternally. And we want to see our loved ones that's went on before us. We're looking this morning at these things that are just not seen with the natural life. But just because you don't see them, that doesn't mean they're not real. It's just like on the nights that you can't see the moon shining. Just because you can't see that moon in the sky doesn't mean it's not there. That's the way it is with heaven. You may not be able to look inside the curtain in heaven and see what's going on in that place today. But we know it's there. And God didn't make that place and, and make it such a hard way to go for you not to be able to get there. Jesus said his yoke was easy, remember. And his burdens are light this morning, so you can make it today. Now, here in... 1 Peter 3, 1 Peter 1 and 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again to a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Think about that. Yeah, home. That home in heaven's been reserved for you through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein you greatly rejoice. Yeah, though now for a season, if need be, you're in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, the trial of your faith, being much more precious than that of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor at the, and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. You think about these trials. He said, if need be, we would be in heaviness through manifold temptation. Yes, but when? Yeah, Jesus Christ, who is our life, shall appear. Those little trials and temptations that we face in this life won't seem nothing. At the sight of the Son of God. At the sight of the face of the Son of God. All those trials and heartaches will melt into gold and silver. You know, all those tough times and times you thought that you was going down. They won't seem nothing but just like a speck in a spot. And in the comparison to what heaven is holding for you and for me this morning. Now 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered to the heart of man. Now remember, that's a natural man without the Spirit of God. The things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, 
Yea, the deep things of God. So if you've got God's spirit in your heart this morning, you can see this home that's waiting. Yeah, and it's going to be worth it all just to make it to that fair land. Whatever trial you got to go through today. Yeah, realize it. A, you're not going through that trial alone. You've got Jesus with you. You've got your brothers and your sisters with you. And B, whatever trial that might be, heaven will be worth it all when we get there, won't it? Just a few words this morning. When we thinking about these things that we cannot see. Yeah, Titus 2 and 13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. We're looking for that this morning. We've not seen it. Scientists can't prove it. Yes, but through the eye of faith, we know it's there and we know he's coming. May God bless you as our prayer this morning. Please trust that you're praying for us at the church and just as soon as it's possible we look forward to opening these church doors and having a wonderful time in the Lord with all our brothers and sisters. When it goes well with you, please remember me and my family in prayer. We sure need it. We sure love you. And again, happy Mother's Day to everyone out there. And God bless you.